Howdy! My name is Lisa Snyder. I'm the author of Photoshop CS5, The Missing Manual, and I'm very proud to announce my newest book, Photoshop CS6, The Missing Manual, which is available for pre-order from Amazon.com right this very minute. <laughs> in today's tutorial, let's talk about one of the new features in Photoshop CS6 called the Content Aware Move Tool. And it's fabulous for letting you select an object and move it a little ways, uh, left, right, up, or down, within your image. And the reason I say a little ways is because you only want to move the object a little, uh, a very small distance. You don't want to take something that was on the far left of your image and move it to the far right. Probably not going to look realistic. But for example, if we want to make this soapbox on the left look like he's winning the race, Content Aware Move Tool is just the ticket. So I'll go ahead and turn on the two layers that I created earlier to show you what our final result is going to be. There we go. See? Not too bad. <laughs> we'll have to do a little bit of cleanup work with the clone stamp tool, maybe the spot healing brush set to content aware, but it's really an amazingly quick technique. So I'll go ahead and turn those two layers back off by clicking and dragging above their visibility eyes in the left hand column of the layers panel. And now there's a couple of different ways that you can use this tool. Uh, we're going to start out with the regular old way you might use it, which is using the tool itself to create the selection. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create a new layer onto which we're going to do our moving and we can double click it and cleverly name it move. There we go. And now let's go ahead and come over to the tools panel and the new content aware move tool lives in the healing brush tool set. Okay, it's almost down to the bottom, this guy right here. It looks like two intertwining arrows. You can, of course, activate it using a keyboard shortcut. Just press and hold the Shift key and tap the J key. Uh, J is in John Lennon on your keyboard to get down to that tool. But we're going to go ahead and grab it right here. The next thing you want to do is trot up to the options bar and you want to make sure the tool is in move mode. Uh, the other mode is extend and you can use that to make a, let's say, an object bigger, taller, shorter, fatter. Maybe you'd make a building a hair taller. But in this tutorial we're going to concentrate on move. The next menu over is called Adaptation, and that lets you tell Photoshop how much blending to do in the selected area. Your options range from very loose, which means not very much blending, to very strict, which means a whole lot of blending. You'll need to experiment with this setting, as the best option will vary from image to image, depending on what exactly you're trying to move and how much free background area you've got around it. From the factory, this menu is set to medium, so we're going to go ahead and roll with those settings. The next setting over is sample all layers. Go ahead and turn that on. That is the option that lets us tell Photoshop, hey, this thing we're about to do, do it on its own layer. That way we're not harming the original image. Basically, you're telling Photoshop to look through the empty layer you just made, which we called move, to the layer that contains the actual pixels below, which is our background layer. Now we're set to go. With the new empty layer active and your options all set and the content aware move tool activated also in your tools panel, you can use this tool to freehand draw a selection around the item you want to zap. Now if you've got a steady hand and you've got quite a bit of background, free background that is, around the thing you want to move, this is just fine to use this tool to make the selection. However, if you don't have a steady hand, you can actually use any selection tool you want. So we're going to look at that method in just a moment. Now that you've got a good selection of the area you want to move, it's as simple as clicking inside the selection area, or rather the marching ants, and holding down your mouse button and then dragging that item to a new position. And I'm not going to drag it very far. And in CS6, you also get a handy info overlay, as you can see there next to my cursor, that tells you how far you're moving the image, or the object rather. As soon as you let go of your mouse button, Photoshop is going to calculate everything it needs to do accurate blending, or as accurate as it can get. And as you can see, it did a darn good job. Now at this point, we're finished with our selection, so we can trot up to the Select menu and choose Deselect, or simply press Command D for Deselect on the Mac, or Control D for Deselect on the PC to get rid of those marching ants. Now, as I said, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do here. 
around the wheels. A little bit here and a little bit here. Incidentally, I pressed Command or Control Plus to zoom in, and then I press the space bar, which gives me my hand cursor, and then I can press and hold and move around within my image once I'm zoomed in. Now to clean this area up, we could use a couple of different tools. We could use the Spot Healing Brush set to Content Aware, or we could just go ahead and use the Clone Stamp. If you've got blending to do, use the Spot Healing Brush. So let's go ahead and fix this area with the Spot Healing Brush, and I'm going to go ahead and create another new layer onto which I'm going to do that. So I'll call this Wheel Fix. And now let's go grab the Spot Healing Brush from the very same tool set as the Content Aware Move tool. And then in the Options bar, you want to make sure you've got Content Aware Mode turned on and Sample All Layers turned on. And now we can come over to the area we need to blend, like this little spot right here. And you can just use the left bracket to go down in brush size or the right bracket to go up in brush size. I know there's a hundred more keyboard shortcuts, but I can never remember the darn things. <laughs> and then once you get your brush just a little bit bigger than the area you want to adjust, just go ahead and click and drag on top of it. And now we've got a nice blend between that shadow and the gravelly area. Now let's press and hold the space bar and click and drag with our mouse to move to the other wheel. This one doesn't really need blending, it needs a little bit more shadow to come over there on the uh, right side of the wheel. So let's go ahead and switch to the clone stamp tool. It actually looks like an old stamp. Go ahead and activate that. And then in the options bar, you just want to make sure that your opacity and flow is set to 100%. And then you also want to turn on all layers from the sample pop-up menu. Okay, so again, that's making Photoshop look through our empty layer to the information that lies on layers below. So now with the clone stamp tool, you need to tell Photoshop which area you want to copy from, and you do that with a modifier key, and it's Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC. Click once to tell Photoshop that's the area you want to copy from. Release the modifier key. Mouse over to the area you need to fix. Mess with brush size if you need to, and then just click and drag to fix those areas. Now I've got a little bit of a repeating pattern here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the Spot Healing Brush and zap that real quick and zoom back out. And that looks pretty good to me. Arguably I could do just a tiny bit more cleanup work. Oops, better switch to the Clone Stamp tool because I accidentally copied over part of that wheel. And we'll do a little bit more cleanup there with the Clone Stamp tool. Great! So that is using the Content Aware Move tool. And if you look over here on my Layers panel, you can see we've got the Wheel Fix on a separate layer, and we've got the actual Move happening on, a, on, on another layer. Let's go ahead and turn those off real quick. As promised, I'm going to show you how to use a different selection tool first. Go ahead and create your new layer, Move with Selection tool. And then let's use the Quick Select tool which does not live in the Healing Brush tool set. The Quick Selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut is W or Shift W. And you can use that to create a selection first instead. You want to make sure to turn on Sample All Layers with the Quick Select tool because again, you're on an empty layer and you need Photoshop to look through to the information on the layer below. I'm using my right bracket key to go up in brush size left bracket key to go down in brush size, and you do want to catch some of this shadow. And if you'd like to play around with this particular image, just send me an email to lisa, L-E-S-A, at photolisa.com, and I'll fire this image over to you. The good folks at iStockphoto.com have given me permission to give that to you. So now we've got a decent selection of the area we want to move. You want to expand it a little bit, so trot up to the select menu and choose modify, expand, and for this image, which is fairly low resolution, I'm going to choose a pixel expansion of 10. See how Photoshop expanded that selection to include a little bit of the background? Now you can switch to the Content Aware Move tool. And we're on the correct layer here in our Layers panel, and then you can just click and drag within the selection to move it. So depending upon the item you're trying to select and how much contrast you've got, you know, it, using a selection tool may yield a better result than just using the regular old content-aware <laughs> move tool. Listen to me, the old content-aware move tool <laughs> to make a selection. And as you can see, we've still got a little bit of cleanup work to do around that wheel. So that's all there is to it. I look forward to seeing you back here next time.